Come on, bear. Well, our lovely South Carolina snow day was a little prettier this morning. It's now turning pretty muddy. Still got a bit of snow on the ground. It's melting quickly. Girls, I'm sorry, you're not coming in right now. So we have our friends up here for the weekend. Um, honey, stop. And we planned on doing like a, a pretty big compost class this weekend, but because of the weather, we decided to cancel the class. Uh, we weren't gonna be able to set up in time. However, our friend did come to teach us. And we're, in a few months, we're gonna have a class that we open up um, to more people. And we've just been going over just like different aspects of soil, uh, biology, geology. It's so fascinating. I love watching my kids learn and get engaged. And now we're actually gonna create a compost pile here in our barn. And we will have fresh soil in about 30 days. And we're doing it in the barn today because it's very cold outside and it's windy. Um, and this is our best place for right now to start it. Plus it'll add warmth to the barn as it heats up and we continue to turn it. No calf yet from Miss Helen, but we are definitely getting close. There's 12 million microbes 12? in one teaspoon of compost. No, oh, dang. That, Can you imagine? And you know what's really, really amazing is that scientists have only identified about 15 to 20 percent of them. <laughs> so really, we only know about just a little bit of them. There's so many million that we don't even know all of their functions. That's why we said it's a mystery. Yeah. So we have to have geology and biology and geology and biology is soil. So today on our farm, we have a friend of ours that teaches permaculture down in Florida and who knows a lot about compost here. And he is teaching us how to properly build a compost pile. We bought this new piece of property and we are doing some really massive growing efforts as well as trying to establish some sustainability with our pastures. And we just want to establish good health in our soil and our pastures and our plants and our gardens and just overall on our farm and anytime you're trying to grow anything it always goes back to the soil and so we have a lot of compost that we need to make not just to add to our gardens but also to make compost tea to spray on our pastures and we're really learning the importance of adding that biology back to the soil to bring overall health so we have phil here with us so one thing to note as a warning before we step into this um when you are creating a compost pile and you're piling up all the things that we're piling up we're piling up a lot of nitrogen we're piling up um, these different plants and manures and different stuff this is going to get really hot so this is a thermophilic pile and we're going to be controlling the moisture and very closely monitoring the temperature um, it's a very it's cold outside and so that is a benefit but even still people have burned down barns before um, they Phil and Becky were just telling me mulch trucks have caught on fire, different things, because there's gonna be so much heat in the middle of this pile that it's very important that you're gonna turn it really regularly. Now in the past, we've always done really um, passive composting efforts, if you could call them that, which is basically just piling up a whole bunch of bedding, you know, off in a corner of our property and just letting it turn down, maybe turn it with a tractor occasionally and letting it break down over time. Uh, those piles never got super hot and so it wasn't the same thing as what we're doing now. These very intentional efforts where you're turning it regularly, you're monitoring moisture, you're monitoring the temperature, you get usable compost in a much shorter period of time which is what we're wanting to do. It's more effort but it's definitely worth it. But I did want to mention on the front end that this is not something that you want to pile up in a field or especially in a building and just leave because that could actually be a dangerous thing. Well, Mom, uh, Did you guys get Wes to carry the sticks? No. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Man do the work. <laughs> so this is the base of our pile? This is the base of our pile and we put the sticks down because it helps bring oxygen in to the pile. This brings oxygen in? Yep. yep. Nice. So look, we put these sticks down because it helps bring oxygen into the pile. So they're like that for a reason. Neat, huh? Good job getting the sticks. Teamwork makes the dream work. Why do you have thumb holes? Why do I have thumb holes? Yeah. Helps keeps my hands toasty. 
We have a very, uh, well, mad cow right now. She is going to be having her calf any day. And so we've got her in here in a stall because it was icy. We didn't want to risk her slipping and falling while her ligaments are getting so loose. She's not happy about her containment. When we go into developing nations, we want to teach as many uh, people as we can the power of building compost. So this pile right here um, is called the 18-day Berkeley compost pile. Now, I do not subscribe to the 18 days. Um, and I'll just tell you quite honestly because I've never seen it happen in 18 days. There are people around the world that I'm sure have seen it happen in 18 days. Um, one of the ways that you can see that happen is if you were to make it with good quality sawdust, um, you know, or really broken down, uh, you put the hay through a shredder, um, the smaller the particle size, of course, the faster it's going to decompose. Um, so if you spend a lot of time, and if, if we were to put all this through a shredder and get it, you know, down to a quarter of an inch, of course it's going to go faster. Um, what we've got for demonstration today is mulch that has largely decomposed. Um, that's, that's a really decomposed pile right there. It's close to compost, as a matter of fact. Um, but it's going to be good for us to put it in here and finish it out. But in the 18-day uh, Berkeley compost pile system, um, we want to have sticks on the bottom to provide aeration and oxygen. So um, we also make uh, Dr. Elaine Ingham, who is my wife Becky's teacher, and we make her compost pile as well. So um, awesome that Jess and Jeremiah have got their uh, compost uh, thermometer. Uh, they're going to check it every day. And um, we are in a barn, and for anybody that's concerned about that, um, they're going to be checking this pile every day, and they're going to be uh, making sure the moisture is right. Normally, we don't build, uh, you know, inside a barn like this, but because of the weather today and where we're at, we decided to go ahead and build it this way. Well, we're about to have a calving out here too, so it might be beneficial to have a little extra heat little in warm. here as, yeah. like, as we it as we will warm up this barn. I which promise is neat. you that. So, but it does come with the cost of being more attentive and make sure that you're it keeping does. it safe. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to keep it safe and uh, because what we don't want to do is build a thermophilic pile, a hot compost pile, and just leave it. Uh, what we want to do is go by the formula that um, Berkeley uh, School uh, came up with. And by the time you're done with this, I think you will have spent a grand total of two hours turning this pile. So um, it's, it's good exercise and it's incredible uh, biology. Well, what we want to start doing is going ahead and getting the carbon that's over here. We've got, uh, what's her name? Helen. Helen's hay. This, uh, this uh, manure and uh, urine hay is two days old. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to start. And what we want to do is put it about a foot high in a three foot circle across the sticks. So okay. if you guys want to grab a pitchfork, tell me get a pitchfork and get at it. Got one. Over there behind Here's one too. Um, when grass is cut green, it's going to still have a large part nitrogen. Right. Uh, we would count that as a really nitrogen filled uh, hay. But if it's, if it's, uh, That's largely dies in the straw, field, yeah. if it dies in the field and then it's cut, um, then we're going to count it as a carbon. Okay. So this is straw right here for what we're doing. So, it might have a little bit of green in it but from her knocking it out of her trough. So but guys, it's when you put it down, shake it in a circle around the pile just to kind of declump it and, uh, and move immediately. i tell you what let's do. Let's go in a circle like this. So Mr. West is coming through and we're going to go through Perfect. like this. That's how we make the food. <laughs> Good job, Ben. Well done. Good job, Ben. Because as we build this thing, it's going to get almost five foot tall. Wow. Okay? So we want to build it. I'm a six foot man. We want to build it about right there. So just think, when you're thinking about how high it's going to be, it's going to be about that high. And we want it to be kind of a steep pile. And so we want to make sure we've got some good width um, as we're building. 
And this, this, we may have to have, well, it's actually coming out pretty good. Um, this is going to be important too. Just kind of go across it like that. You may want to take the shovels. Uh, it's holding together decently with these. But what we want to do is um, layer this all across the top. So this right. could be like much less broken down. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This yeah. just, just wood chip straight from. Yeah, normally our wood chips are going to be a lot more chunky and large uh, than these, so these are more broke down. I'm going to say we're going to we're going to do a good uh, 15 scoops of this and uh, just get it all the way across the top. The greater the diversity, the greater the uh, resistance of the plant to disease and uh, pest depression. So um, the more diversity we create in this compost pile, um, where are we at on the count? We can throw it out of hers and then we'll replenish it with that because she's also peed on a lot of that, so we'll get more out of it. Good job, Evie. You got this, girl. Listen, you know what they call people that make a lot of compost piles? What? Compost chefs. Ah. <laughs> you got to make 5,000 piles to become a compost chef. That's it? Oh, cool. Yeah, so 5,000 piles, according to Jeff Warren. Good job, Abby. That was a good one. <laughs> good job, Ben. You taking pictures for uh, Lori? Look what Abby did today. Good. Uh -huh. good. Here's Abby making a compost pile. She's a compost chef. So technically, we're a sous chef right now. <laughs> Chef's in training. Jeff Costco. Jeff Costco. So at our super fancy Christmas Eve dinner that we do just for our kids, so we like go all out, like go fancy food, yeah. dress up in suits and ties and all that. Daddy. The dessert was like this tiramisu kind of like cake, and everyone's like, "Where did this come Mom, from?" Mom, did you make this? My mom this? was like, uh, "It's from uh, a chef of Costco." <laughs> I'm not, I do, I, I cook good dinners, but I don't okay. do a lot of dessert. We need some water. So we need the water hose. Let's keep bringing the straw. Let me see your pitchfork just a second. Our daughter actually made Again, guys, let's just keep the sides kind of pulled out just a little. Right. So somebody, when you're building a pile together, somebody's going to be in charge of the form of it. Doing a great job, guys. Don't spray people. Point that downwards, okay? Okay, so what well, you're going to do? Phil. He's only in charge. What you're going to do is come up. Is it, will it come any closer? Yes. Pull. Right. Pull, Toby. Bring it up closer, and let's put it on the spray. Whoa, Not that that's cold water. That far down to get cold right now. But okay, so what you're going to do? <laughs> go ahead and keep bringing the hay, guys. Go ahead and keep bringing the hay. Let's go up about another six or eight inches. Toby, be very mindful. You're not spraying people. It's too cold. Okay. So one of the biggest problems is people simply you can put that directly in the middle. Yep. There you go. Okay, Toby. Ooh, Toby, I was now, asking. Now, Toby, walk around kind of, or I should say spray in a circle. Okay, Toby, come on, come over here and uh, hold it just a little bit. Brown? I know that's not brown, but it's dried up. Yes, it's straw. And then we got greens, and we got greens over here. Browns, greens, water, and Oxygen. Good job, Toby. So a lot of people say, aren't you concerned about weed seeds um, when you're building the compost pile? And the answer is, in short, no, we're not. Because what happens is we're literally pasteurizing. We're heating the seeds to a point where it kills them. Mm -hmm. um, and they become decomposed in the pile. Now, what I do not encourage you to do, especially beginning composting, is don't uh, compost rhizome-based kind of weeds um, and noxious kind of weeds. So there are some weeds out there that, yes, you could compost them, but if you mess up and you don't get the temperatures high enough, you're going to end up with a weedy mess when you're done. Or if but you don't turn it enough. If you don't turn it enough. You have to turn it. But yeah, the quick answer is when we're uh, composting, we're bringing it to a temperature where the weed seeds are killed. Okay, what we're going to start doing, you can stop right there, is we want to add some of the higher nitro the high nitrogen, um, which are these uh, greens we have here. 
and also some chicken manure. So proportionally what we're thinking about, and as I told Jess, when we build the next pile come March, we're gonna do it around the wire and we're gonna do the same lasagna kind of effect. And in the middle, we're gonna put uh, of the six parts carbon um, and brown, we're gonna put three parts green nitrogen and then one part high nitrogen. So that high nitrogen chicken manure is excellent. Um, comfrey, nettles, um, you can use, we're gonna use these greens right here. This is gonna be great. Alfalfa is another good one. Mm -hmm. um, let's go and get those three buckets, guys, and just okay. shake them across the top. Get a bucket. It's too tall, you can do it. Can just do try. It. Here, like a flower girl, but like a flower compost boy. So Don't what we out. wanna do. <laughs> flower compost boy. <laughs> you did a great job picking these. Guys, what I'm gonna encourage is just dump them out for speed's sake in the middle. Yeah. And then um, we're just gonna take it and uh and spread them around do you want the other bucket in there yeah let's go ahead and bring the other bucket in there and now we're going to bring some mulch to this and um what i want to do is put the mulch um one more uh a, a, sp a sprinkling let's not forget our chicken manure a little of this because we've got so much uh greens here um i'm not going to use all of this and notice, guys, I'm trying my best to not let it come out in clumps. In fact, that clump right there, I'm going to separate. Another six inches of wood mulch on top. Right. Maybe. Is that getting you all wet? No. Man, is that getting you? In uh, four days, you don't start to see the temperature changing. It's going to mean we did not put enough nitrogen. So take the mystery out of it. If for some reason we don't see this thing light up, which is highly unlikely, um, we're gonna know, hey, there's not enough uh, high nitrogen in this pile. Um, so if it's, uh, if it's too wet, now we're, because we're under cover here, we're not gonna have to use a tarp because, uh, but when you're outside, you're gonna wanna use a tarp on this. If it's dry, uh, it's not going to activate. So nitrogen and moisture are two reasons it won't activate uh, and go to temperature. One of our reasons for wanting an actual barn versus doing everything in the field. You think Helen's your favorite cow? She is a great cow. Is because we wanted to be able to collect the bedding for compost reasons. I'm just keeping the cow calm. Mom, can I get in there with them? No, I don't want you to get in there. She's okay right now, but she was getting a little agitated, so she's real close to giving birth in the next couple days. Um, you're building this outside, and you just want to make sure it's not a lopsided pile. Get it as centered as you can, um, and what we want is a good steepness to it, um, and it's going to go again. We got about this this much higher, but we want to just make sure that we've got enough room for material. Okay, so with depleted soils, with chemical farmed soils, the one of the things that we're looking at from the beginning, we know that this soil is going to be very bacteria dominated. So there's still bacteria that are alive in the soil, but it's not a good diversity of bacteria and the fungal uh, threads are, it's basically gone. And so to grow any kind of uh, tree, uh, food, row crops, grass, any of these things, you have to have a certain, like you've got to have a high amount of fungal um, material in there, biomass in there. And so what we're doing with any compost that we're making, um, anything that we're spraying compost teas on, we're trying to get the fungal threads back into the soil because then once, once the bacteria and fungal um, proportion gets right, then the other microbes are going to um, populate awesome. in the soil. Fungi and is fungi. the maturity of the soil. Fungi. The fungal and bacteria uh, mass, just, biomass, uh, is what's going to get the nutrients out of the, the parent material. Really right. Cool. Okay. And then they're going, then the other microbes that come, they're going to eat the fungal and bacteria, and then their poop. It's, a, it's called a poop loop, is what is going to feed 
the plant. That's awesome. what's going to make all of those minerals available in the plant. Awesome. We're getting close. We're getting really close. As I melt it down. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so is the 631 ratio the same on this? It's, More or less, it's just a little. It's not the exact proportion. Um, uh, Jeff Lawton calls it a 24 to 1 carbon to nitrogen ratio. Um, but what we're going to teach when we come back, of course, in March is just a simple six brown, right. three green, one high nitrogen. This is simply my favorite pile to build in developing nations and with a group. Um, the other one can be done as well as far as people helping. But the Berkeley, there's just something about the way it's built right? Um, that it really um, lends itself to a fun team project. Right. So to the person who's nervous that they're going to get these ratios wrong, what would you say to them as a tip? I mean, like, because I'm watching you here, how right. exact science is this as far as making sure you're layering these up properly? Yeah. So with the, with the Berkeley... Um, you're literally just thinking in terms of, of a, like a, a lasagna. Right. And you're going to layer uh, a good bed of 12 to 15 inches of straw. You're going to put, um, you know, four to six inches of carbon or mulch. Uh, and then you're going to build it up. And then the middle is where I put the high nitrogen. Right. Um, and then I, so we put those three buckets of greens and also the chicken manure. And um, so, you know, it's, it's going to be proportionally about the same as the 631, but the 631 is just exact. Okay. And that's why we like, um, that, that's why we like it. But the, the Berkeley people can go online, of course, and, and really study it uh, if they have technical questions about it. But you want to make sure it has, it breathes. Um, and you want to make sure you have properly uh, built it. It needs to be about three feet uh, wide mm -hmm. and about five feet high. Okay. And um, so right now we've watered it down. So and we're going to come in in a couple days and do this. Yeah, in a couple days you're going to come in. And the easiest way to know you've gotten to the center um, is to just kind of get an idea of here. Um, and you can know... Um, if you just look from the top and you just divide that in half, that's, that's going to be center right there. So you're going to need to be able to, to go in about this far with this probe. Yeah, that's and, a 36 inch. Yeah, so go in and push it in to that point and you're going to leave it for, I don't know, three or four minutes. And it'll normally after four days, it's going to go and go up pretty fast. I would guess you might get a temperature of 100 to 120 after four days. So you're going to go around the pile and just do three uh, temperature checks on the pile. And again, clean off the rod when you're done and um, put it back in the sheath. And I just encourage you to just leave it in a convenient place. On day four, where's the pitchfork? Oh, I like it. Here we go. Very important, guys, that you catch this. What you're going to be doing on day four, so we're going to take the outside layer of this pile after four days, and you're not going to stick it in this way. You're going to stick it in this way, and you're going to get like peeling an onion. Okay? So you're going to take the outside, and so, excuse me. So go ahead and go ahead and make your area over here. You know, go ahead and just kind of mark it off of where you're going to turn it to. And again, about three feet in circumference. And we're going to put the sticks down first. Get more sticks and do the same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we're going to peel it like an onion. And we're going to turn the outside inside. Okay. Yeah. And you, you do that every time it reaches temperature? You turn it? Yeah. So with the Berkeley, normally... It's every, uh, so after the four days, you're going to turn it every other day. Okay. Okay. So what's going to happen is you're going to turn it on the fourth day. So at day six on uh, the second turning, this pile is going to need to be at 130 or above. Because if it's not, the carbon to nitrogen ratio is wrong. In other words, you don't have enough nitrogen in it or it was not properly watered in. 
So how do you amend that? So your temperature is not there yeah. at day six. You add more nitrogen and yep. water it down more? So if at day six you're not at the proper temperature, you're gonna pull it apart at the, the top here, and I'm gonna go down about a foot and a half, two feet, and I'm gonna add chicken manure, and I'm gonna really water it in. Okay. Cover it back up. In Africa, the way that we teach people how to judge uh, temperature is if it's 110 to 120 degrees, you're gonna stick your hand into it, and at 110 degrees, you're gonna go, ow. It's gonna be like, that's uncomfortable. As you can guess, at 150 to 160 degrees, you're gonna stick your hand into the middle and pull it out as quick as you can. I've done it before, just for demonstrations, and it's like, whoa, a oven. It's just that hot. But when you're doing a thermophilic pile, you have to be on your marks. Mm -hmm. um, you can't say, well, yeah, I went in there and, te and tested it. It was already at 160. We'll get it tomorrow morning. Wrong answer. Okay. What you're going to end up with is pasteurizing all of the microbes and they're going to be dead. So what we don't want to do is pasteurize the microbes. As my granddaughter says, we have to take care of the microbes. <laughs> we have to take care of the microbes. <laughs> As, you, as you're taking care of the pile, you're going to want to do a moisture check. So on day four, very important, um, you're going to want to reach inside of the compost pile and you're going to want to get uh, a small amount of the material. Okay, so this is, again, this is a little uh, way to check moisture that we use in developing nations where you don't have a moisture checker all right so what we want to do is we want to squeeze this with both of our hands and what we want to see is that when we squeeze it um just a little it doesn't all gush out at once right now it's in the beginning stage so it's gushing out um but what we want to do is we want to see maybe a small trickle at the end of these two knuckles and that's about 40 to 50% moisture where we need it. But if you squeeze it hard um, and you don't see anything, it's too dry. It's time, to water. it's time to water it. All right, guys. So it's actually two days after I shot the majority of this video. Um, I just had this lipoma removed off my neck the day before we had that composting day. It was so cold outside and the weather was just not great. And... Um, I really overdid it. So I've been resting and now just now getting back at it. Helen is still pregnant. I'm going to go out and shoot a vlog this afternoon, kind of catch you up. Maybe we will have a baby by tonight, but I kind of wanted to wrap up this video where we were talking a lot about compost with Phil and Becky Burton uh, from Generations Farm down in Florida. They're amazing. I'm going to put their Instagram down below so you can check them out. We're going to be doing a lot of stuff with Phil. He actually yesterday walked around with Jeremiah and I and we talked a lot about kind of the permaculture design plan that I have for our farm. Some different things that I want to learn about and implement. Kind of got his opinion from a design standpoint and I'm really excited. He's working on a book. He's working on some curriculum. Uh, he has a really cool revelation about stewarding creation and just soil from a biblical standpoint and just really where you can see the heart of God in, in all of that. And I loved learning from them. Like I said, yesterday we really just did, the, it was really just the people that work here on our farm and their families um, because the weather was so bad they weren't able to get here earlier and we wanted to set things up. So making this compost pile was sort of the precursor for uh, the class that we're going to do in March. I'm going to be shooting more content with him, but I wanted to put this up so you guys can kind of see it, see a little bit of what we've got going on here. Um, it's really important to us to build resources for education. And though um, doing compost like this is obviously, it's very hands-on. It's more work than we've done on compost in the past. But our goal on our farm here is to close that loop and to produce as much of what we need as possible because that's really the way that we do sustainable uh agriculture. So that's it. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Thank you for hanging out with us today. Uh, more Helen updates to come. It's a pretty day. We actually let her out on pasture today, so she'll probably drop the baby out there in the field, but we're going to be here watching closely. 
thank you for hanging out with us. I bless you. Until next time.